Welcome back, everybody. Our players just made it through the Emerald Grotto, and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. So let's dive in. So before we get going on recapping exactly what happened, we want to do what went well, what could have been better, and some ideas that I had for the future. And this will be pretty quick, I think. The first thing that I feel like really went well is the added motivation that I gave my party to go and find the Jewel of Three Prayers. I didn't specifically say, hey, there's a jewel in here, go find it, but we did it through Iris's patron and had a silvery wisp come out, kind of depict this fight scene between the shark and then like a little arrow pointing them to the way through the collapsed cavern. The motivation for the players was really strong because of this. And even to the point where during the shark fight, Iris was trying to get in this little crack. So the way the book describes it, there's a little crack in the wall that's emitting a golden light where it's supposed to have the landslide and cave in. But even during the fight, Iris was trying to weasel her way into the crack and get up. She couldn't quite fit immediately after the fight. She went up into the area to go retrieve the jewel. Again, she didn't know that the jewel was there, but she had a large motivation because of her patron to go up and get the jewel. The next thing that I feel like went really well, my players felt that there was a need for them to move quickly through the grotto. And the way that I did this is simply have the rivals behind them, because my party rolled higher than the DC of 13 to be the first in turn order. I had the rivals behind them and they could hear the rivals behind them. They could look back and see the rivals at points. My players were like, all right, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. And throughout the entire grotto, they were talking about how we need to move quicker so that we can get to the emerald amulet first. And it worked out really well, I felt like. The last thing that I want to talk about that went well is we had some decent interactions with the rival party. So we had on the way, on the procession to the Black Islands and to the Emerald Grotto, we had some interactions with each of the rival party members when we had the shark fight because my players did well during the grotto. A few rounds into the shark fight, the rivals came in and they had a good relationship and they helped quite a bit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. What could have been better? In my opinion, this is the only downside that we had for this session. And it's the fact that Jimmy wasn't present for the actual vision itself. And I feel like I could have finagled it so that he would have been there, and we'll talk about that more, but he managed to escape with the Emerald so that they could win the race, and in doing so, he wasn't with the party when they went up and found the jewel. And I wish that I still would have had him connected to the party in some way, shape, or form so that he could have experienced the vision himself, and we may retcon that. I'm still on the fence about that, and we'll see what happens. Ideas for the future. So we've talked about a couple of different interactions, and I'm not gonna go over those again for each of the party members. On top of that, I'm also playing with the idea of adding a vestige or some sort of magical item that is the equivalent of a vestige of divergence for each of my players to acquire so that they each feel special and they each have a pretty awesome magical item. I tend to lean more towards adding magical items for my players because I like them when I'm playing and I feel like most players do as well. And then if I need to, I can adjust HP or other things for my combat encounters to make it so that things still are challenging as we go throughout the adventure. We've got all that out of the way. Let's dive into our session notes. The first thing we had when we got back is everyone headed to the paddock and on the way, Iris had her patron vision. We talked about that already. It went really well. I just had her participate in the vision. It went pretty well. She had some questions and things. She was a little curious. Wasn't quite sure what to make of it, but we kept going towards the paddock. When we got to the paddock, I gave the party a few minutes to kind of meander about and Jimmy went looking for chaps because he had made him like a little wooden leg. Um, it's kind of mechanical and things. My, my real player is an engineer at heart, and so he, he had this idea of how he wanted to improve Chab's peg leg. So he went and sought out Chab's and gave it to him, which was kind of a fun little interaction. And then the rest of the party just kind of meandered about. They saw the two shark attack victims. They saw some other people that they were familiar with in the crowd and then just kind of waited things out. Then we had the elders kind of introduce the finale and say, you know, you have to win if you want your team to win. And they announced that you'd have to march to, it's a race, that you'd have to march to the Black Islands and there'll be a procession. So lined everybody up and they went out. So the elders went first and then the two rival parties were together. And Io had, uh, this is where we had some good conversations with the rival party. So Io approached Jimmy and just said, hey, I'm really impressed with your group. And I really enjoyed the competition you gave me as we were in the, the race for the spear and they kind of went back and forth for a little bit after that i had dermot come and approach dimitri in kind of a timid shy way and just say hey thanks again for giving me the courage and the motivation to go through the maze i really appreciate it they gave high fives shook hands kind of introduced each other and as the procession walked on they had a conversation 
Um, Galsari had kind of came to the group and just said, hey, how'd you guys do on the riddles? And they talked a little bit about that because that's something Galsari is interested in. Then we had Maggie approach Chosen to talk tactics, and it went about as I expected. Chosen was like, I don't know what you're talking about tactics. I just brute strength it, kind of a deal. And then they talked about their battles as they were going to the Emerald Grotto. Lastly, we had Irvin kind of approach Iris and say, I don't know how you did it with all those pies. I'm so gross. I never want to see a pie again. And they had a like, quick little interaction. As they got to the Emerald Grotto itself, we had the presentation there. They got the potions of water breathing. Uh, Jimmy doesn't need it. So he handed an extra one to Chosen who just kept it on his person. So from there, we jumped straight into rolling initiative and my players beat the DC of 13 to be first in the rival party. So let's go ahead and jump to the map. I think this will be helpful. So as they rolled initiative, Jumby just actually jumped straight into the water down, water pool down at the end in hopes of talking with some sort of creature that could help guide them the way. And in doing so, he saw that the path went forward. So the entire party jumped, he called the party to come forward. And they all jumped in and went forward into the area E2 right here. And they made it through the kelp, which is in here pretty uneventfully. It went pretty quick, kind of hard to see through. And behind them, they could see the rival party through the, the kelp, which made them want to move quicker. So once they got down to E3, there's the little fork here. Dimitri used the metal of the maze to help give them the easiest and quickest path to the end. And I had them, it's really about the same, but I had them choose this east path because it's a swarm of quippers instead of the octopus. So they went this way and the rival party headed down this direction. Once they got to E4, Chosen wanted to search through this. It's described as ghostly white grass. So he spent a few minutes with his axe trying to get through and they had to make deck saves to try and avoid the grass. They all managed to do so and they made it out pretty uneventfully. So then we get to um, E5 where there is a landslide that happens and they all made their deck save so they took half damage and the rock slide kind of looks like it's preventing them from exiting in this general area. However, immediately they just said We're, we'll start digging and in digging they go over there and see that that there is an actual exit, so it didn't take them very long to get through here and this general direction where they run into a, their first real problem in the swarm of quippers. They fought back and forth for a little while. They had some arguments about, well, let's just pass it and get to the end. So Jimmy decides to keep going forward, as does Dimitri. Uh, Iris uses a, a cloud of daggers and Chosen uses his one of his grung poison vials to make them kind of confused and uh, he think he used a green vial which made them a little confused and they did enough damage they killed about half the swarm and then confused the remaining half and ended up moving forward without finishing off the swarm of quippers where they ran into their shark and immediately Iris goes oh hey I remember this part of my vision with the shark and all that we described the shark having the spear and the emerald tied to them so Jimmy immediately goes to try and cut the rope so that he can get the emerald Dimitri goes straight for the spear and the other two chosen and Iris start attacking the shark so we have a couple of rounds of combat fair warning this shark is no joke it can do quite a bit of damage it almost one shot Jimmy and then eventually did take Jimmy out as Jimmy finally got, gets the amulet, pulls it out, puts it in his pocket. As he's going to retreat and exit, the shark bites him and down goes Jimmy. At this point, my party starts to hear the rival party coming from this general direction. And we have a few more rounds. We have another round of combat where Iris gets it. And as she tries to leave the shark, the shark bites her and she goes down. And then the shark moves up here to block the exit because it can tell that they're trying to go this way. Dimitri pulls the spear and gets the plus one moon-touched spear. Jimmy grabs the amulet. The rival party makes their way in and starts attacking. They don't know that Jimmy has the actual amulet. Iris is down over here. Dermot sees Iris down and spares her. Then we continue to fight for a little bit, another couple of rounds where Iris eventually is trying to get through here as she was revived. She decides, well, there's enough people here. I'm going to try and get in here. She can't quite fit in yet. Through some more rounds of combat, the shark comes and goes and mostly just pa patrolling this general area so that people can't escape. Jimmy uses Misty Step to come back into this area. No one knows where he's gone and he has to fight the Quippers who are no longer confused. And he is on death's door with just a handful of hit points. Luckily, they roll really low and he does well enough that he can get out and escape. So Jimmy heads this general direction and then shortly thereafter, the shark is taken down by the remainder of the rivals and Chosen. Chosen actually gets the, the killing blow where he chops the shark's head off and takes the shark head as a trophy. When the shark's head's chopped off, there is a landslide that stops here, cutting them all off, cutting everybody off from Jimmy who is gone. And then the shark comes this way, hits as is described in the book. The cavern opens and everyone heads this general direction and Iris does it real quick. She jumps right up and sees the jewel here. I just read the box text as it's described 
and she is incredibly motivated to do this. So as she goes forward, they to reach for the jewel, the rest of her party chosen, and Dimitri come up, followed shortly by the rivals. They have the vision where Elixian is asking for their help and whatnot. They go unconscious. They come they revive about a minute later with the rifle party kind of like there. Dimitri rolls really high on a perception checks and notice that their pockets have been rifled through, but nothing is missing. So they were looking for the amulet the rival party was. Iris ends up with the jewel of three prayers. So then at this point, they all decide, well, let's probably head back. And it takes them about 10 minutes to dig out the cave in here because they don't want to go this way and face the octopus again. The rifle party had left the octopus. While all this is happening, and Jimmy makes his way all the way back to the entrance and presents the emerald to Elder Ushru, who at this point is just ecstatic at the fact that the Norgap Horde have finally won for the first time in five years. So they're having a party, and then about 10 or 15 minutes go by, and everyone starts to get a little bit worried about what has happened and where everyone is. Eventually, our party of heroes and the rival party come on out, and there's a giant celebration. Everyone's ecstatic. Celebrate into the night. Elder Usher gives them their rewards, 100 gold pieces, and then they all head back to the Unbroken Tusk Inn, where they're provided a free night of stay. At that point, partying well into the night, and eventually they all make their way into bed where they reach level four. So that took a little while because they're at this at level four, you can do ability score increases or you can do a feat and I allow both. So it took a while for them to kind of dig through some of the feats and whatnot that they wanted to do. And that was the end of our session. It went really well. It was a lot of fun, lots of back and forth. There's some high anxiety moments with some of the characters going down, but overall I think it went really well and I'm excited to see where they go from here. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know what your party has done in this. I'd really like to know. I've seen a few stories down in the comments, so please let me know what your party does. It's super interesting and fun for me to see how your party differs from mine. Anyway, that's it. We'll catch you in the next one.